Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this laser guiding system for my six color, six station manual printing press. I picked up this press off Kijiji used. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a Benmar, it was made in Canada. It's pretty well made, pretty sturdy. Um, but I decided I needed a laser guiding system for it. Now the Benmar press has this piece on the top that I'm going to utilize and build off of, and this is going to be the mount. The first step is to remove it. The second step is to cut these pieces of metal to build the actual bracket that's going to hold the entire thing to the press. I chopped them out with my plasma cutter. I've assembled and clamped the pieces here around the bar that they're actually going to hold in place so all the fitting is good. Then I'm just going to MIG weld them. Now I have to drill a hole through the side for the pivot mount. I decided it was best to do it all in one shot right through the bar and the bracket. And here's the final bracket. I've sprayed it with a little bit of enamel. I welded a nut on the bottom there, and that's for adjustability of angle. You'll see that later. This is the telescopic metal I'm using. It's important uh, to know that when you go to the metal store to look for this, you specifically tell them you need metal that fits inside of the other piece, that these are going to telescope one inside the other. Most metal tubes actually won't fit like this. You'd think they would based on their outside and inside dimensions and wall thickness, but they don't. This stuff here is actually called 100 wall, or at least that's what my metal store referred to it as. So I guess it's slightly less than eighth inch. Now I'm drilling a hole through the end of the square tube and welding on a nut. This is going to be for the telescopic section so it can be tightened and adjusted to any length. This is a little handle I got at Home Depot. Now I can start the assembly. First I put the bracket onto the press. Then I install the first tube and put the pivot bolt through. This is the adjustability I was talking about earlier. It is simply a nut welded on so that you can adjust the angle of the arm so it's higher or lower depending on what you need. I wasn't sure how it was going to clear the screens when they were in the up position. They say if you can't build something perfect, build it adjustable. Here's the smaller piece of the telescopic rod and the tightening nut I was putting on earlier. I 3D printed this small safety cap that goes in the end here just to make it look good. You could probably buy one of those at the store though. The electronics were a whole different matter. I started with about 15 or 20 feet of lamp cord and then attached an end to that. This is the cord I'm going to use to plug in. You really have to run the cord from the machine directly vertical to the ceiling and then out and down a wall. It can't really hang off the machine. The whole thing swivels and spins as a carousel and you'll just get tangled up in the cord. So it's got to be taken completely out of the way. It would either have to be fed down through the machine and across the floor, which is another option, or up to the ceiling. This plastic project box was just something I 3D printed. Here I'm soldering the connections from the wiring coming in from the wall to the button and then to the LED. This is a small 5 volt 1 amp power supply that I got from eBay. They're pretty cheap, like a couple of bucks each. I tend to use hot glue to insulate all my connections because it's easy. Now I just jam everything in the box and mount the box to the machine. I'm just using zip ties for this. Now 
and this is what it's like mounted to the press. You can see how this works, just zip ties and Velcro to hold all the wiring together. And then those two wires feed all the way out to the end where I'm going to mount the laser. This is the piece I'm going to put the laser onto. The laser itself is a small 650 nanometer, 5 milliwatt red laser diode. I got two of these off of Amazon for about 10 bucks, I think. The clamp itself is a small rig ball head clamp. This is mainly made for photography and photographic equipment, so the screw end is a 1 quarter by 20. The question is, how do I get the laser to mount to this? There's no threaded points on the laser itself, so I'm going to have to make a little aluminum holder for it. That's what I'm doing here on the lathe. I just started with a piece of aluminum scrap that I had laying around. Now I'm going to drill a hole in the end and tap that to 1 quarter by 20. I've parted the piece off, flipped it around, faced it, and now I'm drilling the other end, the part that the actual laser diode is going to sit into. Here I've got to drill a hole in the side to put in a set screw that's actually going to hold the laser. The set screw is also, I believe, quarter by 20. Once the hole is drilled through, it's got to be tapped. And here's the final mount. You can see the hole in the bottom there, quarter by 20. I made another little hole for the wiring from the diode to come out. There's the little set screw that holds everything in. Now it's just a matter of clamping on this small rig clamp and then screwing the holder onto the end of that. I don't really know much about lasers in terms of, you know, what they're milliwatt power equals invisibility. So I bought two of these. They're both uh, cross lasers. They both produce a cross pattern. I thought they'd be handy for making complete boxes. You'd know where to line the shirt so the pattern goes inside of that. It turns out though that a five milliwatt laser is not very bright. These things, I mean, it shows up better in person than it actually does on camera, but I still find it's not as bright as I would like it to be. So in the end, I decided to get a different laser. This laser is a 10 milliwatt green laser, and you can see it's a lot bigger than the original one that I had. So I'm gonna have to make a whole new mount for this. Now, this one says, when I bought it, the instructions said that you can't run it for more than 45 seconds because it gets hot. So I thought, I want this thing to run continuously and never shut off. So the first step was to find something that would work, and I thought this heat sink and fan combo would do the job. Now this thing has a momentary button on it that you have to push to actually make it come on, so I soldered a wire across those two connections. Then I took the spring off, that's for a battery holder, and wired on a negative to that, and then there's another terminal for the positive. This way, when you attach power to it, it comes on right away. Now, I took this heat sink that I had, I don't know what it's off of, the fan itself is just a 12 volt computer case fan. The heatsink, I bent some of the tines out of the way so I could get the diode down in there and then sort of bent them around the diode. I thought maybe this would be enough to dissipate the heat. Now, of course, the fan runs at 12 volts while the laser runs at 5 volts. And I've only got a 5 volt power supply in the base. I don't want to have to re-engineer that. So, here I'm using a boost converter. It's essentially a little electronic device. You can get them on eBay for about a dollar a piece. I believe it's an MT3608. And with this, your input voltage comes in. You turn the little brass screw on that blue square adjustable resistor, and it alters the output voltage, actually boosting it up. The back of it I coated with some five minute epoxy so that I could glue it to the heatsink. Here I'm drilling a hole in the bottom of the heat sink and tapping it for quarter by 20 so it screws onto the mount. It's a pretty MacGyver setup. It's not uh, terribly pretty and certainly nothing you'd put into full term production, but uh, it works pretty well in this case. And this laser is definitely brighter than the last one. 
you can see this one easily in all lighting conditions, even full daylight. The important part is how it looks on a black shirt. Uh, black shirts, unfortunately, absorb light pretty well, so they really make the laser super dim, but you can see here it works really well. So, no complaints. Hopefully you've learned something from this or were inspired to build your own. I mean, I think you can buy these things from Ryonet for about 300 US dollars. For me, that would turn into about 500 bucks. I think I spent a total of less than $100 on this, so worked out pretty good. But that's all I've got for you today. Please click the like and subscribe buttons and check back for more content soon. Thanks for watching.